morning. It is 2016 Easter Monday in the Hellenic Republic. This video is about uh, tuning chips, tuning boxes and how they can operate safely. So if we can talk about petrol turbo tuning for a change, we've done a few videos on diesel. So if we can look at petrol. Uh, the tuning boxes generally, well no, this is how they work, all of them, is that the boost sensor on the engine says that the car is making, for example, one bar of boost. So the, the, the tuning box will go intercept that signal, that boost signal from the engine. It will take the one bar boost signal into the tuning box and it will output a signal that says, for example, 0.9 volts. So the ECU sees a boost signal of 0.9 volts. The ECU then compensates for that 0.9 and adjusts the boost pressure to one bar, where it should be. This is how the tuning box increases power. It manipulates the boost sensor. It, it under-reports the boost signal going to the ECU, which makes the ECU compensate for the boost pressure. And that's how it gets, that's how it makes the ECU increase boost pressure. So there's two problems, potential problems with this approach. The first is uh, air fuel ratios. Will the car get lean with the increased boost pressure? Because remember, we haven't touched the fuel in. We're lying to the uh, ECU that the boost pressure is low. And the second one is mock. So we're increasing the boost pressure, but again, we're not touching the timing. So is that going to cause potentially damaging knock for the engine? Those are the two, two big questions. So let's answer the first one about the air fuel ratios. Modern cars, basically, the, the, these, the, a tuning box will only work, like a plug and play tuning box will only work on the newer, uh, newer cars because the newer cars have two things one they've got a wide band lambda sensor and two they've got very very active knock strategies so how does that how does that make it safe in, with regards to the, the fueling like i said the the car the cars now petrol turbo cars especially have wide band lambda sensors from the factory whereas before the, the sensors were narrow band they could only measure air fuel ratios at, at cruising or at idle but with a wideband sensor the, the ECU is now able to work in closed loop for the, the entire operating range of the engine or very close to the entire operating range of the engine because that wideband can constantly report accurate air fuel ratios to the ECU at all times and th this, is the, this is what makes a tuning box safe for a petrol turbo car. The petrol turbo car, the ECU is always taking air fuel ratios from the, uh, from the engine. So it knows if the engine is running lean or not. And if it detects that the engine is leaner than what it should be, then it can increase the fueling. And this is how they can, a tuning box can run safely on a turbo petrol engine with regards to fueling. With regards to timing, again, newer cars have very, very active uh, knock strategies. They are constantly adjusting ignition timing uh, to get the most performance and to get the least emissions and to get the most uh, efficiency from, from the fuel. So this means that you, you increase the boost and the, the ECU will be able to detect if, if, if that extra boost pressure is causing knock and then it can retard the timing according to that knock. Like I said, the, 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 the knock strategies are very advanced now on the modern petrol turbo engines. 
they are constantly advancing timing until they start at the tech lock and then they're backing it off. Constantly advancing the timing until they, until they start the tech lock. Until they start the tech lock and then they're backing off. They're constantly doing this. So a tuning box is not changing anything that the ECU does not do already. Except it is changing the point at which the knock starts to occur. But the process by which the ECU starts to detect knock is not changed at all. That is working as normal. And this is how knock is not a problem on a modern turbo petrol engine. Say, so going back, the knock sensors in the ECU were not advanced enough to do this. They were the knock sensors were not accurate enough to to measure knock. They could not be trusted to measure knock. So that meant that the timing strategy of the engine was very was very basic and it was not active. But now the car can constantly be advancing and retarding the ignition, looking for the best um, for the best timing for the engine because the sensor is good enough to do it. But before simply Simply speaking, the technology was not there in the knock sensor, and the knock sensor could not be trusted um, to be able to do that task. But now, modern cars, modern technology, it allows the ECU to do this. So those are the two ways that, that a tuning box is safe. One, the ECU for modern cars is constantly measuring air fuel ratio, so the car will not run lean. And, and uh, two. The modern ECUs are constantly advancing and retarding ignition. They are super active um, in being able to uh, run the optimum uh, ignition timing. So knock is also not a problem with um, a, a tuning box. So having said that, there are limits to how far you can go with a tuning box. Because uh, with regards to the fueling, there is a limit to how how much the how much the uh, engine will accept with regards to how much extra fuel it's having to put in. If it's having to put in a lot of extra fuel compared to the boost pressure it thinks it's running, then it's going to understand that something is not quite right with the engine. There is um, there is um, the, a, a minimum and maximum limits of the fuel which the ECU believes is acceptable. And this is, could be, uh, with regards to fuel, it will be mainly uh, weather conditions and altitude. So it needs to have like a minimum and maximum value for each like RPM and uh, throttle position. But once you get outside that, something that's perhaps not in the map, then the ECU is going to either throw a fault code if it's not serious, or it's going to go to home into limp mode if the ECU thinks it is serious. So there is a limit to how far you can go with a tuning box without altering the factory software. And the same goes for the ignition timing. There is a limit to how much boost you can put through the engine with the original software. Because again, the ECU will have a map which will tell it you should be able to run X amount of ignition advance at X RPM and at X TPS. And if the engine finds it's not able to run that amount of ignition advance <coughs> without the detecting knock, then again it's going to trigger a knock sensor. I just want to show you Egnity uh, in Thessaloniki Easter Monday. Whoa, never seen it so quiet as this. Come down in the night sometimes and uh, it's busier than this. Anyway, Easter Monday, it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. So anyway, I digress. So there is limits, so there is one way it's safe, i.e. Um, the, the, the ECU's modern technology allows the, the, the engine to be very dynamic with what it is seeing, but two, it also means that there are it's more sensitive to the limits of where things should be. So you can't, there are, there are limits to the tuning box, um, but before the tuning box can cause damage to an engine, the, um, the ECU will have picked up the problem. So the, the tuning boxes are very good, they don't alter the, the, the safety parameters that are put into the engine. 
high the limits of what things should be and they don't uh, suppress uh, like the log sensor or the lambda sensor in a way they don't manipulate those signals and that this is how a tuning box can be run safely